This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. For more than 10 years now, there's been talk in the EV world about a new lower cost model from Tesla. But this week, Deutsche Bank claims it's happening next year. Deutsche Bank reached this conclusion after some of its analysts spoke at length with Tesla's head of investor relations, who told them that Tesla is working on a new Model Q for the first half of next year, with a US price of under $37,500 without incentives. Tesla has not yet confirmed nor denied the report, but it's worth noting that at the Tesla CyberCab reveal earlier this year, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed private customers would be able to buy one, but that it would come without any conventional control surfaces like steering wheels or pedals. According to Deutsche Bank, Model Q, an internal name, not an official one, will be one of several planned models from Tesla to launch next year. If this were to happen, it would be the first time Tesla has revealed and launched a vehicle in the same year, and the history books suggest this would be unlikely. We all know that electric vehicles provide a quieter driving experience compared to internal combustion engine vehicles, but that can also lead to other noises being more noticeable. Which is why this week BMW has just celebrated the launch of a brand new aeroacoustics and e-engine test centre, which it says will help it make its EVs even quieter. Replacing its old wind tunnel setup in Munich, the new facility focuses on ensuring there's no sound reverberations within the test chamber allowing the automaker to better mimic the noises made by wind passing over the cabin at speed, thus allowing better acoustic design to mitigate it for those inside the vehicle. Currently, BMW cabins are already pretty quiet, but the new facility aims to take that upper level. According to BMW, when the fans are spun up to simulate the kind of wind you'd get travelling at 140 kilometres per hour or 86 miles per hour, the chamber's background noise is just 54.3 decibels. Battery lifespan has always been the worry of new electric car drivers, and with plenty of FUD in mainstream media, way too many people still believe that EV batteries require regular replacement. If you've been driving an EV for any length of time, you'll hopefully know that's not the case, with most EV batteries outliving the cars they're placed in. Now new research from Stanford University suggests that previous battery lifespan calculations, estimated using laboratory testing, are far too conservative for real-world use. In fact, its research suggests that most EVs used in the real world will result in up to 40% longer battery life than previously stated. This not only puts EV battery pack lifespans well above that of many internal combustion engine vehicles, but suggests that used EV ownership isn't the risk that many people are led to believe it is by misinformed and biased media outlets. Toyota has unveiled its newest electric vehicle in the form of the Urban Cruiser, a compact SUV that's designed primarily for the European market. Built on the Urban SUV concept from a few years ago, the Urban Cruiser will make its public debut at the 2025 Brussels Motor Show. And if it looks a little familiar, it's because it's built on a shared platform with the recently revealed Suzuki Ivatara. That translates to a similar spec with a choice of all or front wheel drive and a choice of 49 kilowatt hour or 61 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery packs. The front wheel drive variants will offer an entry level 106 kilowatts at the wheels or a more powerful 128 kilowatts, while the all wheel drive variant pushes that up to 135 kilowatts. Range and price to follow next year. Also revealed for the first time this week is a new luxury model from DS. Called the DS No. 8, the luxury model is scheduled for a mid-2025 launch date. Just a little smaller than a Tesla Model Y, it's a mid-size model that DS is calling an SUV coupe, and I've got to admit the design is different enough from everything else out there to stand out a bit. To my eye, it looks a little like a Rolls-Royce Spectre from a distance with similar roof sweeps and massive wheels. We don't have pricing 
pricing yet, but we do know that it will be offered in standard range front wheel drive, long range front wheel drive and long range all wheel drive variants with up to 750 kilometers, 466 miles on the WLTP SAS cycle in its most efficient variant, thanks to a low coefficient of drag of just 0 0.24. 160 kilowatt DC fast charging will come as standard. We've spent enough time behind the wheel of BMW's current lineup of EVs to know that they're very impressive, combining decent performance with BMW's legendary road manners. But we've also known that the current models on offer are far from BMW's end goal for performance EVs, with the M division full steam ahead on developing future quad motor variants. This week, that division published a teaser video showing how its development of the same is progressing, showcasing a quad motor I i4M50 based prototype undergoing final testing and as part of that it let some of its board members get behind the wheel allowing them to see what fully independent driven electric motors can unleash. Of course it's worth noting that like any automaker published teaser video it shows the brand in a good light. It suggests a production quad motor is most certainly in the pipeline in the near future. It's official. General Motors' self-driving arm Cruise will stop its development of robo-taxis and instead its IP and technology stack will be absorbed into the automaker for use in its range of cars. Announced at the start of the week, GM confirmed that it will no longer be pursuing Cruise robo-taxi operations or development of a standalone robo-taxi. Instead, it plans on leveraging the software and hardware developed by its Cruise division to help expand the autonomous capabilities of its fleet allowing it to transition from Super Cruise technology as a level 3 hands-off, eyes-up driver assistance system into something more advanced. Cruise has been a problematic subsidiary of GM in recent years, with high-profile accidents in California and submission of a false report to a federal agency investigating a safety incident last year. We're seeing a lot of people commenting on social media these days about how terrible they think EVs are, and that includes people claiming that they're going back to fossil fuel vehicles because EVs are just too bad to use. But as I'm sure many of you realise, most of those reports are nothing more than spam bots and fabrication, and now data from a new survey backs that idea up. Enter a new survey from the Global EV Drivers Alliance, which questioned more than 23,000 EV drivers from 18 different countries about their opinions of driving electric, and the reality is very different to the FUD. Of those questioned, 92% said they plan on sticking with electric for their next vehicle, while 4% said they'd pick a plug-in hybrid. Only 1% said they'd go back to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Tesla has, for a long time, been the king of EV sales, dominating most markets around the world with sales figures that often eclipse not only second place, but all other options combined. But in France, Tesla's Model Y has been toppled as France's favourite EV by something a little more homegrown, the Renault R5 E-Tech Electric. While the race remained close, the Renault 5 E-Tech Electric sold 3,316 examples to the Model Y's 3,175, French customers just can't get enough of the just-launched Renault. Of course, it's fair to note that the Renault 5 has just launched and there's usually a bit of a boost in sales at a new vehicle's launch, but it's also worth noting that the Renault 5 is substantially more affordable in its entry-level guise than any of Tesla's Model Y variants. The two vehicles honestly don't really cross shop either, but given that the French EV market share is now past 15% of all car sales, I think there's room for both. A new report from JD Power confirms what we've been saying for a really long time. EV incentive programs can help people get behind the wheel of a new EV. Using sales data from the US, the organization has showed so far this year, 87% of all new EV purchases were made with the assistance of the US Federal Tax Incentive Program for EVs. And when it questioned those who had purchased a new EV this year, the majority of those who purchased a higher end model said that federal tax incentives influenced their purchase decision, while around one half who purchased mainstream models said the same. While this does show what we already knew, incentives can help drive EV sales, and in nations where EV sales incentives have been axed, <clears throat> 
EV sales have dropped, it also shows that the nonsense we so often hear about people not wanting to go electric is quite often made up of bivine byproduct from folks who just don't want EVs to succeed. The data doesn't back their hate up. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should check out our buyer's guide at ecocity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay your RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. The price of EV battery packs has dramatically fallen in the nearly 20 years that I've been covering this industry. And while COVID-19 caused a little hiccup in pricing, we're now back on track to reach a sub 100 US dollar per kilowatt hour territory very soon. Tracking pricing through 2024, the average price at the pack level has fallen to $115 per kilowatt hour. That, says Bloomberg New Energy Finance, is the quickest price drop since 2017. It's led analysts at the firm to confidently predict that the cost of EV battery packs will achieve a pack level price per kilowatt hour of under $100 as soon as 2026. That would translate to a battery pack of 80 kilowatt hours being just $8,000 US dollars. Dramatic? less than the $11,500 it was just four years ago. And the lower the prices, the easier it is, from a cost analysis point, to keep older EVs on the road. Far longer, in fact, than comparable ICE vehicles. And finally, electric boats and ships have really come along in leaps and bounds in the last five to ten years, and we're now seeing electric propulsion replacing internal combustion on many ferry routes around the world. But this week, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Kiwi firm VASCV has officially received commercial approval from Maritime New Zealand for its VS9 hydrofoil to become the world's first fully certified tourism electric hydrofoil. As a consequence, its VS9 is now in commercial operation with Fuller's 360, the nation's largest ferry operator. You can now buy tickets to ride on this world-first service. If you're interested in taking a 40-minute tour from Auckland's viaduct out to sea and back again, you can book your tickets now on the Fuller's 360 website. And if you do, snap some photos and video and send it to us, eh? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and to clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He has been making some fantastic content and it's well worth your time to sit there with a cuppa and give it a watch. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing week. Kagite. See you next time.